Gary's whitetail watch. Obviously, it's time to be hunting, or I wouldn't be sitting in a tree this morning. The uh, the rut is now at that stage where um, I would say we've got maybe three or four more days before the uh, the does are at the peak of their estrus cycle. And I don't know if I've gone over this yet, but basically what happens is the highest number of does is in estrus roughly about the middle of November through most of the northern two-thirds of the U.S. and then up into Canada. So you've got sort of a ramp up in activity uh, leading up to that. And I always figure somewhere around the 5th through the 9th is when you've got some does in estrus and a lot of bucks looking for them. So that can be a really good time to be in the tree stand. So we're coming into the tail end of that now. So we should start to see uh, a higher percentage of the does in estrus now. Some will already be bred, but uh, pretty, pretty quick here we're going to hit that peak. And when we do, uh, that generally relates to a slowdown in buck activity, especially mature bucks, because at that point you've got more bucks that are tied up with does, so they're not out traveling, cruising, looking for another one. But you can still, you can still be really successful if you can be in a spot where a doe comes into estrus. So you find a hot doe, and uh, you're going to have a lot of bucks around not so easy uh, to do as it is to say, but basically we're still doing the same thing we've been doing all season, uh, especially for the last week or 10 days or so. We're trying to find those areas where the does are concentrated and spend as much time as we can around those areas. So that means the areas where the does bed in the mornings, and I used to always say in the areas where the does feed in the evening, but as we get into this stage of the rut, the does don't come out into the open as much as they used to. So it's a lot more challenging to find them in the afternoons. The best bet is to stay back in the timber, uh, stay closer to the areas where they bed, a little bit more towards the thicker cover, because as they start hiding out, the bucks aren't going to be as successful finding them in the open fields. So they're not going to travel to those spots as much in the evenings. So your, your strategy should be more transitioning towards uh, hunting deeper in the cover all day now. The uh, uh, Strategy-wise, you know, we stick to the same types of things we've been doing, hunting funnels, anything that concentrates as many deer as possible, as many traveling deer as possible within bow range. Uh, that's what we want to focus on. So keep that in mind here. Uh, we've got another week or so, and then uh, we'll hit another, if you want to call it peak, or another at least high point in the rut, and I'll talk about that again next week. Okay, but now I want to talk about a little bit, change gears a little bit and talk about uh, stands versus blinds and, and how to choose a, a hunting strategy. You know, sometimes that decision gets made for you. Sometimes you want to hunt in a spot where there just isn't a suitable tree to put a muddy tree stand into. Uh, obviously at that point you don't have any options other than a blind. Another situation is one that we run into a lot and that's in uh, low areas where the wind swirls. And blinds, uh, because you can close them up, are a lot better at containing human odor than what you would have if you're just up in a tree stand. Close as many windows as you can. Uh, I've, I've even gone so far as to keep everything closed and just peek out you know, through curtains until the last, you know, the last minute when the deer are starting to come into the spot where you want to shoot. And you can crack a window open and take your shot out the window. Because the more you can do to, to keep the wind from blowing through the blind, the less odor escapes the blind. I love hunting from trees otherwise. Uh, I would like, like to be like this morning, up on a ridge, viewing a bunch of country with the wind in my face and the sun coming up and you, you don't feel like you're closed in. It's just got a, a really, really nice, uh, you know, adventurous kind of a, of a feel to it. Uh, so nothing beats hunting from tree stands from that standpoint but there are times when they just aren't as functional or as practical as blinds. There's a lot of really nice blinds on the market. Muddy makes some excellent blinds. Take advantage of those and uh, make sure you keep hunting. So those are, those are my tips on uh, blinds versus stands and you know why I pick one versus another. I appreciate you joining me this week. Uh, hopefully next time you see me I'll, I'll be uh, carrying one less buck tag in my pocket. Uh, 
Uh, so I'll see you back here again next week for the next episode of Muddy's White Tail Watch. <laughs>